I'm Vince Corzine, coming to you from Joya Production Studio in New York. Dave Knox, band director, and Paul Stanifer, executive director of the Michigan Band and Orchestra Association, commissioned me to compose a piece for the Michigan All-State Jazz Band. The Michigan All-State Jazz Band will be directed by Max Colley, Jr., who is band director of Northview High School in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The name of the piece is Supernova. Now, Dave and Paul asked me to approach the creative process by making six videos regarding my jazz waltz, Supernova. Max asked me a very good question. He said, Vince, how does the composer know where to begin? What do you do? Uh, what do you think about? What's the first thing you decide? Well, of course, everybody's different. Everybody has a different approach. So I said, Max, in the six videos, I will try to explain to all music teachers and musicians and students, whoever listens to this, that there are ways of approaching, but this is the one way that I approach this. These six videos will address all of these questions as I take you on a musical journey. There are many ways of composing. One is the way that I learned um, when I first started was at the keyboard. And I played keyboard a little bit and I uh, wrote music uh, by hand. And then there's other people that do away from the keyboard, which doesn't matter because the end result is the important thing. And now I use Sibelius Music System. I'm sure you can use Finale or any system that works for you. But I happen to get used to Sibelius and I like it. Um, now, Supernova is a jazz waltz. Now, uh, Max Colley said he likes the idea of a waltz and, and we decided together that, that would be good. About a grade five level would be, would be good. Now, it has a rhythmic ostinato pedal with lines floating above. That's the basic idea. I want this really intense sound on the bottom. I want counterp counterpuntal lines weaving in and out, and I want overlapping phrases building to a climax. Now, let's listen to the first example, ostinato pedal point with rhythm section. The second example is a contrasting rhythmic theme that floats above the ostinato. Now this I probably will develop for interludes and transitions as the piece progresses. Now what are some of the things that you have to think about before you write a piece of music? I call these compositional considerations. My brother Rich is a painter, and uh, before he paints, he decides how large the canvas is. In his case, it's six feet, and it's really large. Other people will consider whether they're going to do acrylics, whether they're going to do uh, watercolor, whether they're going to do oils, and everybody decides ahead of time what it's going to be. Now, a poet, on the other hand, will probably decide on the form of the poem, if any, that he wants ahead of time, iambic pentameter or whatever. A composer will decide on the length the tempo, the group, modulations, imitation, and style of the piece. Now the style of the piece is, should it be diatonic, staying in key? Should it be chromatic, going out of a key? Should it be polyphonic, like Bach, imitating all kinds of interesting things? Or should it be more homophonic, like the classical period? Now the next consideration is, and I told Max, the level of dissonance. I happen to like clusters, notes that crunch together and are dissonant. And I think for contemporary 20th century writing, that is very, very, very good to have. Now, motives, um, an ostinato, pedal points, interlude themes, and main theme. For a large work, there's no hurry to move on. Themes are prolonged through imitation and extended pedal points. And one does not have to go too quickly when you have a large piece of music. Um, the range, I asked Max about the technical level. He thought grade five would be good. And I asked him about what's the range of the first trumpet player, because if he can hit a high E concert or high E flat concert, I want to know that. I can put it into the piece. Uh, I thought about a slow intro, adding, like Beethoven, adding instruments over chords, building tension and, and loudness. For instance, a lot of suspension chords leading to a fast waltz section. The next example, number three, is an example for unison trombones is a theme for unison trombones with rhythm section in the key of A minor.
after listening to this a few hundred times or a few times, whatever you like to do, I can paint, came to the conclusion that it's too predictable, it's too symmetrical, and a bit boring. Now, I didn't fall asleep, but it was still too boring. Uh, and I thought back when I first started composition lessons with Jimmy Jufri in New York City. He was a great composer and a great writer uh, and player. And uh, Jimmy said the first lesson, he said, Vince, bring in something that you've written so I can assess where you are. So I came in and he said, well, you certainly have your technical chops up. You know how to put instruments together. He said, but, you know, he said, your piece is too predictable. And I said, well, what do I do? That's all I, you know, all I know. He said, well, we've got to teach you more counterpoint. We've got to teach you more ways of doing things and stretching things and inventing things and, and creating more things uh, and, and developing more things. So he put me on a real stringent counterpoint, uh, free counterpoint uh, basis for about a year. Similar to what Haydn did with Beethoven. He said, Beethoven, he said, you're, you're a great kid, you're a great writer. He said, but you don't know counterpoint well enough. So he sent him to a very, very strict teacher. And when Beethoven learned his counterpoint, he came back to, to, uh, to Haydn, who was a marvelous teacher. In fact, Mozart said Haydn was the only teacher that could teach him anything. I thought that was amazing. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I revised the theme to make it less predictable, less symmetrical, and hopefully less boring.